Shalom Chavrim. I'm Stephen Ben Danoon. You're watching Danoon Institute of Biblical Research. And today we're going to be tackling a subject uh, about a man named Stephen Anderson. Anderson. Uh, say Steve Anderson. I don't know if his first name is actually Stephen or not. Mr. Anderson is how we will refer to him in this video. Uh, I'm bringing this video out because I have had a numerous uh, requests asking about him, about his teachings, and how would I respond to them. Uh, I don't normally like to get into too many uh, public figures and their opinions, but in this case here, as I looked at some of his messages, uh, his uh, anti-Semitic, anti-Israel doctrines, uh, perverting our word of God that I really take very seriously, uh, as well as his bashing of women, basically making them sex slaves at home and obeying every woman desire of their husbands. So I felt like it's very needful that we address this. And one of the first videos that I'm going to be addressing with him is, of course, the dearest to my own heart, and that is the series that he did called The Jews and Their Lies, Part 1 and Part 2. Uh, so it would probably take me maybe two or three parts in order to bring it out because I don't want to wear you out in just one session. And I want you to be able to take your Bible and study along with us uh, to, to expose this. And I trust that Mr. Anderson, that it will help him as well. I'm sure he eventually he will listen to this video. He may not like it, but I'm sure he'll listen to it. Uh, he's getting many, many views because there's so many people that are anti-Semitic towards the Jews. And we'll straighten this issue out. Uh, I'm sure, of course, he's... If he does watch the video, he won't like the Star of David in the background, as he calls it the Star of Molech. Uh, he claims that he spoke to four different rabbis about this, and they say that it's nowhere biblically. Well, we don't have a direct word that says, oh, the Star of David. We look at Morgan David being the shield of David as this, and uh, we'll go into all of that uh, as well. In fact, it'll probably be a separate video that I do just on the Star of David because I'll take you back into Israel and where we had this ancient symbol long before the coming of Christ, even during the time he was here. And of course, we never see any word mentioned by Yeshua, Jesus that is, against that. Of course, he hates the name of Yeshua too. Go figure that one there. Jesus' name is in multiple languages. Is it only supposed to be said Jesus in English? Or something. So we got to really get into a lot of different issues here and, and straighten this out. And hopefully he will listen. And I, I trust, I pray, Mr. Anderson, if you take the time to listen to this video, you'll do it with an open heart. Uh, I know you'll be guarded because you strongly believe what you believe to be true. I'm going to take you, though, into the languages that the Bible was written into, both the Hebrew and in the Greek language there, to try to help you out. And, uh, and also what the writers actually saying. So without further ado, let's go right into the very biblical scripture that you open. I'll show the people what you say here in John chapter, excuse me, 1 John that is, uh, chapter 2, verse 22, you quote there. Let's take a listen to this right here. The Father also. And what I want to point out there in verse 22, when it says, who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He's basically saying that there is no greater liar in this world than the one who would say that Jesus is not the Christ. If anybody is a liar, it's someone who says that Jesus is not the Christ or that Jesus is not the Messiah, because that's what Christ means. So basically, one who does not believe that Jesus is the Messiah, according to the Bible, is Antichrist. And the Bible teaches here that, uh, you know, if you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father. And so what I want to preach about this morning is the subject of the Jews and their lies. That's the title of the sermon this morning. The Jews and their lies. Because that's what the Bible says. Anyone who does not believe that Jesus is the Messiah is a liar. Now turn, if you would, to John chapter 5. I'm going to get into the first lie. Of very interesting, very interesting. Mr. Anderson uh, basically is taking the singling out the verse. I haven't got a problem with someone singling out a verse at all. Uh, but the thing is, in this particular case... The single out the verse kind of makes you lose track of what John is dealing with. He applies this directly to the Jewish people, and this is where he base, uh, gives the foundation of his message, uh, the lies that Jews tell, and uh, therefore claiming them to be Antichrist. But when you look at John 1, and by the way, John is one of my most favorite of the apostles. His insights were just phenomenal, phenomenal to say the least. 
John 1, uh, chapter 1 in his, uh, the epistle that he writes there, where he opens up in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Incredible insight in, that, that he had here. And again, in this first, uh, John, first John chapter 2, he's again dealing with the incredible mystery that God had revealed to him that he reveals in the epistle that's written uh, as well with this name John. So let's take a look at what he says here. I'd like to begin with the 18th verse. Um, and in fact, let's back up to the 15th verse. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And it's very important that we catch this here because that love of the Father that is in him, he's actually going to bring out something very important there. And this is why the lie is important that you understand this. Uh, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. Okay? And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. See, John's trying to build for you a foundation about what he's going to speak about. And he's separating the flesh, the flesh from the spiritual. Little children, it is the last time, as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. So he separates the two. He shows that the Antichrist will come, but then he says there's many Antichrists already there. So it's a, it's a working that is beginning at its early infant stages, even during the time of the apostles, and it will only magnify in the future as one coming, all right? So they went, on, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. So therefore, what John is fixing to address about these liars, actually the word in Greek is falsifiers, the ones that are bringing out a false doctrine, is nothing to do with the Torah. It's nothing to do with the Jewish beliefs. It's nothing to do with the Tanakh, the Kotavim, the Navim, nothing to do with the writings of the prophets. This, these are people that are already have embraced Christianity and believed. Remember the, 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 the parable that Jesus gives about the, the, the seeds that are being sown, and he talks about some falling by the wayside, some falling among the thorns, some falling on the rocks, and of course, some falling in good ground. This is what John is dealing with. These are people that have believed the report that Jesus brought out, Yeshua himself brings out, and so therefore, uh, he's dealing with this particular subject here. He is dealing with those that came in, but they went out. They went out from them. And what did they go out for? Well, let's see. John will actually explain that. He says in verse 20, But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Actually, no false thing, no lie, no unbelieving thing is of the truth. All right? Now, Let's take in uh, one moment here. I want to make sure we get this right up for you here. Um, okay. I have, excuse me, I have not written unto you, verse 21, because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar or who is a falsifier? Okay. But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, he is an antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. He denies what? He denies that Jesus is the anointed. Now, he, he calls him an antichrist, literally in Greek. Let's take a look at this, okay? And he says, any is the, uh, the falsifier, if uh, no one that Jesus is not the anointed, this one is the 
instead of the anointed. In other words, this doctrine that was they were dealing with was someone was claiming to be the anointed. And of course, there must have been more than one because he says many antichrists, many so-called that are claiming to have that anointing had to go out from them. They, they had basically came in and perpetrated themselves as being now they are the ones that are anointed of God. Now, notice what he says in the verse to start with. They went out from us, but they were not of us. Verse 19, um, if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out and they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that, it, that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is an antichrist. Let me, let me back up. I missed the part. Verse 18 is where it is, I believe. Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard, that antichrist shall come. In the future, what Antichrist? The one that would place himself instead of Christ. He is the one that is, is the pseudo-Christ, so to speak. He's the one that, that claims to be the anointed one. So he puts that in the future, but then he shows us in verse 18, even now are there many, many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. There were many that were claiming to be the anointed of God. And they'd come in among the true believers. Well, yes, sir, they may have been Jews. Maybe not. Maybe they were Gentiles as well. Goim, who knows? It doesn't matter. The thing is, the gospel of Yeshua was to all nations. Not until after the resurrection, though. Yeshua clearly commanded his disciples to go into the lost house of Israel. He also, we know that this, this and, but once his death had come, then his, his resurrection, the atonement that he had made for sin, had now opened up the door for both Jew and Gentile alike, the people of the nations as well. This is why Paul was an apostle to the Gentiles. Now, John is dealing with ones, and yes, they may have been Jewish. Who knows? It, what, do, what does it matter? The point here has nothing to do with being a liar as Mr. Anderson's trying to bring out, it is a falsifier. Falsifying what? The word of God. Now, this, this is actually a much deeper passage here, my friend, than what you realize. And so I want to help you to see what truly is the depth of the scripture that you're quoting. And then we're going to go into other issues. Okay. Verse 23, Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledged the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. This is what's so incredible right here. He takes you back to the beginning. He's not talking about when Yeshua came, when Jesus came. He's not speaking of that type. He's taking you back to Barashit in the book of Genesis. Okay? So which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you shall also continue in the Son and in the Father. What remains in you? Something that you heard in the beginning has to remain in you. Hmm. And this is the promise that he that promised us even eternal life. Wow. What is that that you heard at the beginning? It's about the eternal life. Now, one second, I want to take you into something else. Give me one second here. All right. I want to take you back to um, the gospel according to John. Now, you know, I know there's a lot of debate among scholars. Did the, 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 the gospel that was written by John, was it written also by uh, the same author as far as 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, the epistles that, that are written there? To me, it's very obvious that it was because... And, and there are scholars that actually hold to that. But let me, let me share with you why. When you're looking at what he says here, let there, um, whosoever denieth the, okay, I'm sorry. Let, let there therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you shall continue in the Son and in the Father. So he's going back and he's doing the same thing that the 
Gospel of John is written about is about the beginning. Notice, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Uh, so he's, he's taking you back to the beginning. What? To the beginning of the gospel that he wrote. Now, watch what he says here. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So what is that that was supposed to remain in you from the beginning? It is the light, the, excuse me, the life of men, which is the life of Christ. So what is John dealing with over here when he is saying those that did not believe that, that, uh, uh, that, that Christ has come in the flesh is, is, is a liar. He is an antichrist. He is one that is claiming to be in the stead of Christ. He claims that he's the anointed one. There, there must have really been a major doctrinal issue about this light that was inside, that God had put inside of the people there, the, 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 what we would call the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost comes inside of you, you are partaker of the life. You're partaker of the tree of life, the Eitz Chaim, out of the Garden of Eden. You understand? So what he is talking about, these ones that have come in among them that actually went out, they are claiming to be in the stead. They're claiming that it's not just that the life has come in, but they're claiming to be that they are that anointed one. And, and in some of the, the, the uh, writings from scholars, they, they say that the issue was is that... Uh, you know, that, that they did not believe that Jesus came in the flesh. They were only saying that it was spirit, and therefore they're the manifestation of that spirit. So this was what was he was dealing with that is a liar. It is the ones that are claiming to be in the place of Mashiach, the place of the Messiah. And he also says, one will come. Notice what he says there. Um, Little children, it is, verse 18 uh, and 1 John uh, chapter 2, it is the last time, as you uh, have heard, that Antichrist shall come. That's the singular, the, the one that will be in the, instead of, the one that will claim to be the anointed one. He will come. He is speaking of the, tr the final days that we're living in here. That one will come. But that same spirit claiming that they were the, the place of Christ, claiming that that anointing was not in flesh, but yet it was in them, he was already dealing with that problem then. So therefore, he's, he's, he's admonishing them, Okay. Uh, one, he lets them know, you've got to believe, you've got to believe in the Son. He that denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, which is that life in him. That's why he points you back to the beginning. Let there therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he that hath promised us even eternal life. You see what, he, what he's saying? He's not just talking about, oh, well, Jesus, you know, he came in the flesh and, and praise God. If you don't believe that he came in the flesh and everything, you're an antichrist. He's talking about you have to not only believe that he came in the flesh, but you must have that life in you. Now, Steve Anderson wants to, wants to slam the Jews and say, well, you know, they, didn't, they don't believe that Jesus come in the flesh, so therefore they're a bunch of liars. He's not even dealing with the Jewish people in this context here. He's dealing with those that are claiming to be Christians. But they're lifting themselves up to the anointed of God as if they're the anointed ones. Now, so let me, let's go back. Let's go back to 1 John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same for, uh, came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. You understand? See, let me, gosh. You know, you know, Mr. Anderson, especially for your sake there, maybe I need to take you into the, into the Hebraic language so this might help you. So you can really understand what John is speaking about here. Um, let's turn to Genesis. Let's literally go back to the beginning. Be'oshit, be'oshit, 
literally means at the beginning or at the first. Okay? So let's, let's look at the way it just opens it up. Okay? In the beginning or at the first, God created the heavens and the earth. What's in the beginning? God is the creator. All right? And the earth was astonishingly empty, or, and darkness covered it. It's empty. There's, there's nothing. It's just void. And darkness covered the surface of the deep. And the spirit, Elohim, of God, or the divine, hovered upon the surface of the waters. Now, you may not like that, by the way, but that does use a feminine verb. I know you don't like this part. You think this is some kind of New Age movement. You know, you know nothing about what Jews really know and believe. Long before even Yeshua came on the scene, when Moses, when the writing of the Torah, there's a lot of things that you do not know. If there was not a feminine quality in God, believe me, you would have no life. Because it is that feminine quality called the Holy Spirit that he imparted from himself and put in you, if you have that spirit. But undoubtedly, you must be lacking that because you wouldn't preach what you do if you did have it. So now, let's go a little further though. And God said, not let there be light. God literally brings the light into existence. And that light was what? According to John, the light of men. Not just men of male kind, as you would like to believe and make women some kind of subjugated slaves for your sexual perverted desires. It was the light of mankind. That's why he says in Genesis that he created them male and female created he them and called their name Adama, Adam. See, she is called man as well as Adam is called man. Now that is a shocker for you, I'm sure. So it's totally different, isn't it? And what did God say? What does, what, what does God say to the prophet John? It was, they were, it was the light of men. The light of Adam. And what was that light? God actually calls Adam in the beginning. He doesn't call him Adam. Because why? God had not made him as one unit yet. He says Ish. Aleph Yod Shin is how we spell the name Ish, and that is a compound of God's divine name, the Yod for his divine name, and the word fire, Ash. So what was it? The Ash, what is Ash? What is fire? Fire is light. And that light was the light of men. It was not only Adam, though, that had the Ash in him, it was also Isha, his wife. And God never taken and just took and made uh, some byproduct of a man and, and made a woman. No, sir, he did not do that. The scripture literally says, Min ish, from that fire of God, he made the woman. He opened up his side and taken Min ish. The DNA made the flesh. This is why Adam says, she is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. That is true from the DNA aspect of it. But when God taken from Min Ish, from the fire of Almighty God and made Isha, every seed must bring forth of its kind. And that seed was the fire of God in Adam and God taken from there and made another seed, which was that woman right there called Isha. She was not called Chava. She was not called Eve or mother of life, she's called Isha, which is Aleph Shin He. Again, the word fire, fill with the spirit of light, the spirit of God, the second letter of God's divine name, He. The Yod and the He together make Yah, which is God's first beginning of his name. Now, you understand why he says it was the light of men, mankind, not just the man only. If that's the case, then you tell me, pray tell me then why on the day of Pentecost there were both men and women in the upper room. Why was it that the women received the spirit of life as well, just as the men did? Why does the Bible say that the cloven tongues appeared over each one of them? Why didn't it just appear over the men? If you claim that a woman has to, you know, as long as she serves her husband, she's serving God. You have twisted up my God's word so badly, Mr. Anderson. It is beyond belief. 
but I'm, I'm hopefully I can help you. I trust you'll listen because you need help, my brother. I shouldn't call brother yet because what you need to do is you need to get this life in you. Then you'd be my brother. All right. Or will you be as they were and go out and claim yourself to be the only anointed one? He's actually speaking of the Pope when he speaks of the one coming in the future. But if you want to, to uh, preach his gospel, his 501c program, well, I'm sure he'll be proud of you. That's exactly what they're trying to do anyway. They're trying to bring back a patriarchal system exactly contrary to God's uh, program. It wasn't in the beginning. No, was it? So anyway, this is what John and the first epistle here, 1 John chapter 2, is saying here. They went out from us because they were not of us. All right? I have not written unto you, verse 21, because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Why does he say there's no lie of the truth? Who was the first liar? It was Satan, was it? In Hebrew, we call him Nachash, the serpent. And the Choshech covered over the whole area. In fact, there's no place in the, in the Torah where it ever says there was anything good about the darkness. Why? Because the synonymous association between darkness and the serpent were one and the same. That's why you see them today as a creature of darkness. But it's interesting, when the light came, the Choshek could not comprehend it. And so therefore, the light pushed out the darkness. It's the same thing today. The true light is pushing out the darkness. And he says, uh, because you know not the truth, but because you know it, that no lie is of the truth. No darkness is, can have fellowship with light. So it goes out. It's not about Jews. This is about Jew and Gentile alike. It goes together, one and the same. Now, one other thing we're going to address real quick before I close on this video here and we start another part for this, but make it short here. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledged the Son hath the Father also. Remember, he's talking about the beginning. If you deny the Son, then you do not believe that he's the one that God manifested, that light. He was the God bringing him own self into an eternal presence. That doesn't mean that the Father and the Son are one and the same, but they're the same in the respect that God is the one that is the birth. He's the one, the creator. That's a deep revelation in itself. Let therefore uh, abide, excuse me, verse 23, whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledged the Son hath the Father also. So when you begin to believe that Yeshua, indeed, Jesus is the Son of God, truly from your heart, then you can, have that, you can have the Father. Because why? It is that light that's going to be in you. Let therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. The beginning, as I said to you, that's that light. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you. So whatever you heard from the beginning has to be in you. And the light was the light of men. That's what he taught in the beginning of his epistle. This is the beginning he's speaking about. He's showing you that that light was the light of men. Look at what the beginning really is. Continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. He now tells you what that truth is. It's the eternal life. What is the eternal life? The light of God inside of you. This is what the truth is. Not somebody else anointed that can... That can Hand down some kind of eternal life? That's what the Pope says. Oh, without the Catholic Church, you can't be a Christian. That is Antichrist. That's what Antichrist is. <sighs> These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. What is a seducing spirit? A spirit that doesn't know what truth is. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. Ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things and is truth and is no lie, even it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we 
may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteous is born of him. You know the reason why Adam and Eve were not ashamed before partaking of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? They were not ashamed because they were clothed in that light, in his righteousness. This is what John is speaking about. This is not, oh, the Jews don't believe that he was the son of God. He's talking about having the light in you. He's talking, he's directing this to those that are claiming to believe the message of Jesus. At least in a perverted form. Let me just put it that way. Because see, and we know that because they were part of them. They were part of their group. They were part of their teachings. But they didn't recognize. You don't become some anointed. In fact, that's what the patriarchal system does. That's what the true Antichrist does. Instead of Christ, you claim to be the anointed. It's not Yeshua. It's not Jesus that's the anointed. You're the anointed one. And so therefore, your words become God's words. No, sir, that's not it. Once that life of God is inside of you, you need no man to teach you. Because why? The life of God is inside of you and it brings forth the life of God. It brings forth his light, his life. You, ever, you need to study, my friend, exactly who Christ really was. And he wasn't a hater of women either. Something else you need to see. Anyhow, I trust this message is a blessing to you. We're going to take, uh, hopefully on some of these other points here that I'll bring out, I don't have to, I can bring out several points in there, but I don't want to be too lengthy on this. Uh, so please, Mr. Anderson, if you're listening to this video, take and go through each part. You need to see each part of this video, not just, not just one part. Slam your little Bible and act like you get on your soapbox and act like you're somebody. You've, we've got to humble ourselves. You know, the thing is, is I also at one time, you have to remember, uh, I'm, I was born Jewish to begin with, so uh, Jews have a patriarchal thinking as well. God tolerated a lot for a season. But the thing is, when Christ came, liberty was brought. He restored back what Adam and Eve had. Adam and Eve, my friend, were co-rulers in the Garden of Eden. God gave them dominion. We'll get into a lot of these other issues as we go. God bless you. Shalom. We love you. And uh, I'll be working on another video in the meantime while you get to watch this one here. So hopefully later tonight you'll get to see part two. And I can't tell you how many parts there are, so just keep looking for them as they come out. Oh, Hashem.